Hello, everybody. This is Gregory with 5 Minute Catholic Apologetics and Living, where five minutes of your time and get you to the divine. Today, we're going to talk about four things that Catholics, the Catholic Church, got from the Old Testament. Now, before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Nomine Patris et Filio, et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patris et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto. Sucuteram Principio et Nuc et Semper et Seculi Seculorum. Amen. Now, there's a lot, actually a lot of things that we got from um, the Old Testament or from the Israelites, kind of small T traditions that we inherited from them that many Catholics might not understand why we have these things. And just because we inherited some of these things or carried them over doesn't mean that they're codified and dogmatized at all in general or codified or dogmatized because the Israelites did it. But let's just get to it because we can try to make this video actually somewhat close to five minutes. Number one is baptism. So the ancient Israelites and, and later the, the Hebrews of the Jews, the, the promised people, they did baptism, right? We see this most famously with John the Baptist. For the Old Testament, for the, for the, the, the Jews, baptism was a outward sign of, of a cleansing, of, of a repentance. Now, they were doing that before John the Baptist. It was, it was pretty common to, to get dipped in the river as an as a outward sign of, of cleaning yourself from sin. Now, the difference between that baptism and the baptism that Jesus Christ instituted, as you can see in Scripture in the last verses of Matthew, you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and as you can see played out in Acts, is that actually confers grace. Remember, the old Baltimore Catechism definition of what's a sacrament is an outward sign instituted by Christ to confer grace. So whereas the Old Testament baptisms were not conferring grace, there was no grace coming from that, of course, our baptism does. But Baptism in that regard does come from the Old Testament. It's an outward sign of repentance and entrance into a new life, so to speak. Another one is going to be the use of incense. So a lot of people, we did this episode maybe a week or two ago about the smells and bells of being in a church. Incense is something that you definitely see in Scripture, in not just the Old Testament, you see it in the New Testament as well. So why do we use incense in church? Uh, I used to tell my kids when they were young that they would use incense because I go to a church that uses incense for Sunday night, like to, to get the demons off of the altar. But uh, they don't they don't necessarily believe that anymore. But in the Old Testament, you see that incense was used. I mean, going back to Genesis with Noah, and then certainly through the the Exodus and Moses, and then later when the temple was built. Like any time there was a sacrifice offered you would see incense mentioned as being used, the sweet offering of incense. And so what is the Mass? The Mass, of course, is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. It's, it's symbolic and yet not symbolic at the same time. It's a, it's, a, it's a real sacrifice. It's not Christ immolated a second time like some Protestants believe that we're doing every time for Mass. But it is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And as such, since it's a sacrifice, you see that incense is used. You can also see played on Revelation. We talked about in Revelation, uh, the, when we talk about intercession of the saints and how people in heaven can hear our prayers. You look at Revelation 5.8 and Revelation 8.3. In both of those verses, you see saints in heaven receiving our prayers in the form of incense. And so incense is being used uh, in heaven as well as in, as in the past. So that's one of the reasons why we use incense, because incense is used in heaven from what we can tell scripturally and that uh, it is one of the ways that we are honoring God in the beatific vision when we're in heaven. Another one, priests. There are no female priests in the Old Testament. The Levitical priesthood was male, it was male dominated. Now, that's not to say that is the number one reason why there will never be female priests. We have a couple episodes on why we won't have female priests and, and kind of the, 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 the realism or the, the real reasons, the symbolism as Christ and Persona Christe and Christ's relationship with the church and all that. We're not going to spend time here on that because there's, there's separate videos on that. But in the Old Testament, there was no female priesthood. There was none. So since we are kind of a continuation, we are the new covenant, that it makes sense. That is one of the reasons why we won't have a female priesthood. And as I mentioned in that video already, John Paul II has pretty much sealed this, or he sealed it back in, in the 1980s when he wrote uh, an encyclical regarding the female priesthood. So it's, it's essentially dogmatized. It's, it's not going to change. And if it ever changes, then a lot of you rat or you will have your, your legitimate excuse for apostasy, apostasy. 
Uh, the fourth one we can talk about is the moral code. The moral code that we get today, it, a lot of it, of course, strives from, from Exodus and, and, and really from Deuteronomy and, and the Mosaic law you see there and, and, and in Numbers. And this is a common question. It's like, why, why do we cherry pick what the Mosaic law is? So you, you see like some things that the church still believes is wrong, that the Mosaic law, the Moses' law. Uh, said was wrong, but other things we don't think are wrong. And a lot of it has to do with, and Christ even addresses this. He, he, he talks about when the Pharisees are coming to him and be like, you're breaking this Mosaic law, this, 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 like, why aren't you stoning this woman, for example? Why aren't you allowing divorce, Matthew 19? And he talks about these things, like, well, you know, the Mosaic law was, was like with, with Matthew 19, with, with, with divorce and remarriage, because back then they would allow divorce and remarriage. It's like, well, that was a concession that God gave you because your hearts were hardened and there's an evolution of these things but we're going back to the essentially pre-fall view of marriage which is indissoluble. He also talks about like with the old mosaic view of food being food being unclean or being around unclean people like the lepers how women at 40 days after they were given uh, birth to a child they couldn't be in the temple right they were unclean they were not clean and all these things. And he says, you know, it's not the, it's not what you put in your mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out of your mouth. And so there's a lot of references that he makes to kind of like how the Mosaic Law is no longer relevant. And then later on, we see in the Council of Jerusalem, we have a couple of videos on that. Acts 15, how Peter, under the advisement of the different apostles, including Paul, decide that, that, that Christians um, don't have to be circumcised and they don't have to follow the... The, the dietary restrictions and celebrate the old festivals. But in short, the Old Testament, we get the moral code. So yes, we, we can eat pork, thank God, some people would say. We can eat pork and we can do these things that, that the Israelites couldn't do. But what we, what we brought was the stuff that's just inviolable with natural law. Natural law is something that is just wired intuitively into the world. And so no matter what culture you're in, no matter who you are, there's certain precepts that we know are just inherently wrong. And so those that are enumerated in the Old Testament are things that we continue to the Old Testament because whether you're in the Indus River Valley or the Yellow River Valley, the ancient civilizations, cradle civilizations, or wherever you're at in the world, we know murder is wrong. You know, lying is wrong. You know, these, these, we know that sexual immorality is wrong. So all these things that you found in the Old Testament were conveyed in the New Testament as well. So we, we, we're, not, we're not beholden to mosaics law, mosaic law that is not necessarily moral in nature, but the moral code we did bring. So guys, these are four things we got from the Old Testament. I'd love to hear from you. Post in the comments. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray. Mm-hmm.